Hello my most amazing artists. Today we're going to be glazing our ceramic bowls using glaze. Glaze is a little bit different than paint. Glaze is a coating for ceramics, or the clay that went in the kiln, that makes it food and drink safe. As it is straight out of the kiln, your ceramics or pottery are not food safe until all of the porous surfaces are covered with a glaze. That will make it shiny like glass or like something that you would eat or drink out of. It covers up all of the porous surfaces so that nothing can get inside and it becomes safe to drink out of and to wash in the dishwasher. So once the glaze goes in the kiln, it will be a lot brighter than these colors. You'll notice the ones in your tray look very pastel-y and chalky, especially once you paint them onto your clay piece. Each color is labeled. You should really read those labels before you paint because one color that you pick might not be the same color when it comes out of the kiln. For example, you'll notice colors like red might look pink in the glaze tray, but once it goes in the kiln, it fires to bright red. Also, you want to make sure that you do two to three coats. You'll notice that on there, the one brush stroke doesn't look very good. You want to do two or three coats on your entire bowl. But if you do more than that, it could get very runny. You'll notice that your bowl has undergone a physical change. It's now the color white instead of gray. It also went through a chemical change as it changed from clay, something that was from the earth and would have just fallen apart, to actual ceramic. It's almost like glass or stone. We're going to be coating it with the glaze and putting it back in the kiln so that it gets all glossy and shiny like this. But you'll notice this bowl here didn't have glaze in all of those crevices of where I made texture, which means it's not food safe. Now you wanna glaze everything except for the very bottom because once it goes in the kiln, it would stick to the kiln if you had glaze on the bottom. Now, even if you wanna keep something white, it has to be covered with glaze, everything except for the bottom. To start out with, use a clean sponge to wipe the dust out of your bowl. Sometimes when your bowls are in the kiln or if you use pasta noodles to make those letters, you'll have a little bit of ash in that bowl that needs to be wiped away. It's clay dust, it's okay. But be very careful of sharp edges on your bowl while you're doing this. Last week, I reminded you that if you didn't have any edges that you smoothed out, if they were a little bit crumbly or crummy, they would turn to very sharp edges. So make sure you're being very careful when you're using that sponge and wiping your bowl down. Then you are going to get ready to paint. I suggest choosing just two to three colors for your main color scheme on your bowl. If you get too crazy, it's going to take you a long time and we only have today. If you had letters in your bowl, I would start with those first with a dark color. Now you'll notice I used a pretty small brush, but I'm not worried about getting it exactly in each letter. I'm going right over top, not really taking my time, just making sure the glaze sinks down in there because after I sink it down into that imprint, I can go ahead and wipe any of the remainder away with a sponge. Again, it should be a clean sponge that hasn't been used to wipe off glaze yet. Then I will have a nice clean bowl around it and if it leaves a little bit of gray, that's okay because I'm going to be painting over it with glaze. But if you had letters that you pressed into your bowl or if you want to do this to any other texture you pressed into your bowl, that would be something that you do first. Then it will be time to paint your bowl whatever color scheme you want. I'm going to use a large brush because I'm only going to use three colors on my bowl or about two, maybe three or four. I'm gonna start out with red, even though it looks pink and it will dry pink, it's going to come out bright red out, out of that kiln. So I always look at the test sample to see what it'll turn into, especially if I have something I'm trying to make a picture of. If you wanna do details, you can do those later. You just have to make sure that you get your base coat because you're gonna to have to have two or three layers of that color it will dry very quickly. You'll notice that the clay absorbs all of the glaze very quickly because it has so many pores. It's going to sink right in and probably dry within a minute. It dries super, super fast, so you'll be able to do your second and third layer, layer pretty quickly. If you're painting a large area, make sure you're using a large enough brush. That way you don't take too much time using a tiny brush. If you do wanna do details or a small part, one color, make sure you use the right size brush for that. If you don't have the right size brush available on your table, there will be extras at the back table that you can use. Every time you go to change a color, so say if I'm going to go from red to pink, I need to make sure that I clean my brush off. But you'll notice you don't have water on your table because glaze and water doesn't mix very well. You want to make sure that you have a dry brush as you're dipping in the glaze. If our glazes were watery, they would not come out very good or bright in the kiln. So I just use my sponge to either dab it off or I can take that sponge 
and pull at the bristles a little bit just to get that glaze off. It will come off pretty easily. Then I can switch my color. You can mix the colors on your ceramics, but you can't mix them in the paint tray. These glazes are very expensive, so it's important that you keep them nice and clean because I will not be able to refill any that you've mixed. So make sure that if you're mixing, you only mix in your bowl and know that analogous colors or colors next to each other on the color wheel are going to mix best together. If you mix opposite colors, they will probably make brown, but you can layer glazes. I suggest if you're layering your glazes that you go from your lightest colors to your darkest colors so I'm started out with my red and I'm gonna add some green I'm kind of doing all dark colors here but I decided to go for an ombre technique where I started with red and then I went to pink and then light green and now I'm going to move to dark green make sure that all of the textured surfaces if you indented something with a texture tool last week that you really get a brush down into those indentations of your bowl because if you miss any spot on your bowl and it dries with a little white spot, then that's going to not make it food safe. That's anywhere that those chemicals could escape when it goes into the kiln. You wanna make sure to glaze everything so it all becomes food safe. You'll also notice that if you glaze any of the spots where you have sharp edges, it'll turn into a little bit smoother when it comes out of the kiln. Same thing for broken pieces. We can glue them after if you paint both of them today separately. Don't forget to add those second and third coats when it dries. It's very important that if you want it to look nice and not show all your brush strokes or be too light, that you do at least two coats on there. If you do more, it'll get all drippy and probably not look so good. So two to three is the way to go. Then you can turn your bowl over and paint the edges and the not bottom, but around the sides of your bowl. Make sure that even if you turn it over, you're paying attention to where your bowl sits on the table. None of that should be painted, so either way that you can see it is okay. I might turn mine over to make sure that none of that spot touches on the table. If it does, you could sponge it off. You can erase your mistakes with glaze, but you don't wanna paint your whole bowl and then all rinse it off because then that would be a waste of glaze and glaze is expensive. These bottles are called detail bottles for small little details that you can do after you've done your base coats. I have all different colors of these detail bottles that you can borrow at the back table. Just make sure that when you're using them, you take off the cap, you tip it over, give it a shake, and then gently squeeze. If you squeeze too fast or too hard, that glaze will come pouring out and it will defeat the purpose of being in a small detail bottle. If you didn't have a chance to do words with the noodles, you could write words with the glaze bottles here with the detailers. If you do borrow a different color from the glaze station, make sure that you're choosing a dark color because the light ones aren't going to show up so much unless that's what you're going for when you're all done you're going to put it on the cart and then clean up after yourself all right awesome artists i can't wait to see what you create